Havelina fans, and welcome to our new season of the Havelina Coaches Show for the 2021-22 season. We appreciate you tuning in. I'm your host, Mark and Sarah, and we'll be joined in a little while by our head volleyball coach, Tanya Allen, and our head football coach, Michael Salinas. But our first guest to kick this season off is our executive director of campus recreation and athletics, Steve Roach. Steve, thank you for taking some time out. Absolutely, Mark. Thanks for having me today. Just a few days away from our first volleyball match, our first football game. What are the things that are that you're most excited about as we get closer and closer to this start Honestly, of the year? As you and I were just talking off the air a few minutes ago, I think I'm most excited just to see our student athletes compete again in a just more close to back to normal environment. Obviously, we still have some things we're going through that protocols and whatnot that are not normal per the last few years before the pandemic. But I think just seeing them compete and knowing that they're going to go out and just uh, have outside competition, play a traditional schedule, I think just getting back to normal is the most exciting thing as far as athletically scheduling and competing. You go back to the, the previous season and you think about all the the different things that these teams had to deal with that are that they don't normally have to deal with over the course of a normal season but then you juxtapose that with the fact that we had a volleyball team that had arguably the most successful season in program history softball made it back to the NCAA regions for the the second time second consecutive time basketball had their best season ever in terms of win percentage what were the the key factors and also tennis made it to regions for the first time ever what were the factors that allowed these teams to have so much success in your mind regardless of kind of the obstacles that were thrown at them? I think it, was ha it all comes down to self-discipline. I don't think any of the successes we had last spring happened if our student athletes, coaches, athletic training staff, if folks are not self-disciplined and I think folks a lot of times don't understand what a student athlete goes through unless you were one. The early morning workouts, the late nights home, uh, so on and so forth. But I think last year was just compounded with testing protocols, symptom checks, things of that nature. And I don't think your, our teams make it through the year last year as healthy as they did without having self-discipline, being regimented about, okay, on the weekends, we gotta stay within our bubble, we gotta stay. So it wasn't ideal for them all the times, but I think they, they reaped some benefits from that because they were disciplined and we had so much success on the court, but you can't have that success on the court last year without the success happening off the court as far as being healthy, testing negative, and that's a testament to, I think, what they, how they uh, valued their education and their athletics last year. How different or similar are the challenges that are going to face these teams this year? Uh, I mean, they're similar. Um, you know, we didn't, you know, maybe the middle of summer, we didn't think they'd be quite as similar, but, you know, there, there's a testing cadence right now that's pretty stringent on them, and they, um, they're following that right now. So, you know, every week comes with the challenges of, okay, you know, Coach Salinas or Coach Estelle, Coach Madrid, whoever it may be, they're going to face similar challenges with, hey, so-and-so may not be in the lineup this week due to um, COVID protocol. So um, I think there's still, while we are more optimistic about competing this year than we were last year probably, there's still going to be some challenges for the head coaches that they, they will work through. And at times it's going to be day before a game probably they have to figure it out. How frequently are those those conversations had with you and coaches about you know, making sure that everybody's following the protocols and understand what, what needs to be done to try and keep everybody safe and healthy. At this stage, uh, especially with the fall coaches, Coach Allen, Coach Salinas, Coach Dahl, yeah, they're daily. We're keeping in daily contact and just making sure everyone's on the same page, especially with uh, competition now being, um, you know, five, six days away for most of our fall sports. It's uh, their daily and, you know, testing brings a whole new um, level of Testing three weeks ago was stressful. Testing now, you know that if anyone who tests positive is uh, not making the trip to Michigan for football or to San Angelo for volleyball. Now, I know you talk with the coaches about a lot of other things besides all these health and safety protocols as we get closer to the, the days of competition for each one. What have those overall conversations been like with these coaches? Uh, there's excitement, and I'll be honest with you, the refreshing part for me has been you know, we're talking COVID, we're talking those things. The refreshing part for me has been we're also talking sports. We're talking how to practice go, who's looking good, what areas are they working on. So to me, that's been the part that's been exciting is actually going back and talking actual athletics, how they're doing and getting ready to compete against what's the opposing team looking like, what's Saginaw looking like, what's, you know, what's going on with those teams. So that's been the refreshing part of this whole process so far this year is we're getting back to what we do at time, you know, a lot of the times. And obviously COVID is always going to be there this year, I think. So, but we have to work through that. But getting back to competition and, and talking about that's fun too. 
Now, we talk so, one of the things we, everyone here talks about so much is the Havilena Nation, how much we appreciate our fans. Now, unfortunately, we have to wait a little bit longer to welcome them back, but first football game is September 11th. Our first home volleyball match is September 17th. We finally get to welcome those fans back en masse to the spec, to Havilena Stadium, and as we get further down the road to our baseball, football, tennis, beach facilities. What does that mean to you to be able to finally say to the fans, hey, Welcome back. We can't wait. To, we, we, we're so excited to see you again. You know, I, I talked at our uh, Havilena barbecue a few weeks ago and touched on it where we were thrilled to be able to compete last year. It was exciting in the, in the spring. It took a lot of work from a lot of folks around here. So we were very excited about that. But it wasn't quite the same without our fan base there. And we had small pass lists for family and close friends. But we felt it with our fans not being there. And we've had a few events this year with our barbecue two weeks ago. Um, there was a Hong Kong campus on Thursday evening and then with a volleyball block party Saturday night where there seems to be some passion and some energy coming back to campus in general, but to our events as well. And so we're hoping that that passion from those last few events carries over September 11th for football and the following week for volleyball to get people out here and excited again. And to be honest with you, I think as they see our teams compete, I think that passion's only going to grow and because I think they're going to see some good products on the field this year. Yeah, you go back to, for me, I can go back to the Pack the House night for men's basketball in 2020 when we hosted West Texas, and then the last volleyball match, the last volleyball home match against Commerce last season, when you have the feeling inside the gym or whatever facility we're at, when the fans are there, it is so different and it's so much fun when you have a full group of, when you have a full arena or a full stadium, it makes the whole atmosphere so much more enjoyable, and finally, I think finally had the opportunity to do that again this year I think is going to make this an enormous amount of fun for everybody what has been your overall message to coaches as we get closer and closer to the season I think one is let's appreciate this you know you don't know what you have sometimes until it's gone so number one is let's appreciate what we get to do you know our jobs are stressful some days challenging some days but at the end of the day, we get to work with student athletes and get to compete athletically in sports, and it's a lot of fun. So number one is appreciate it. Two, everyone has put a lot of time and effort, and you know, usually the summer months are a lot of administrative work, and then three months after that, you get to start competing in, in August, September. Well, we feel like we've, even though we did compete last year, we feel like we've been prepping for some of these seasons now for two years almost. And so it's just appreciate it, go out and compete hard. I think everyone now does have that appreciation. And they know, hey, you know, that last game could be, you know, you never know when the last game will be when something would hit. And so I think everyone appreciates it. We're going to go out and work hard, but we're going to have fun too and enjoy it. Yeah, it'll almost be a little bit of a catharsis for yeah. all of us when we finally get to have having a football and volleyball playing full seasons like they did a couple of years ago. Absolutely. It's been too long, I think, for everybody. Yeah, we're excited. And I, I think, you know, I'll say it again, I don't think I've been this excited for an athletic season in years as far as just getting to see our student athletes go out there and, and compete and have fun. So we're really looking forward to it. Absolutely. I think all of us are. Steve, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Appreciate it. And I know we'll see you in Saginaw, Michigan, as well as we'll see you on the field at Havlina Stadium on September 11th. Looking forward to it, Mark. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the, thank you for your time, Steve. Okay. We'll take our first break here on the Havlina Coaches Show. We'll come right back with our head volleyball coach, Tanya Allen. Don't go away. Welcome back to our first episode of the Havlina Coaches Show for the 2021-22 season, and we're joined now by our head Havlina Volleyball, Indoor Volleyball and Beach Coach, Tanya Allen. Coach, thanks for taking some time out. Thanks for having me. We're taping this on Monday, which means we're just a few days away yeah. from Friday, September 3rd, when you guys will be in San Angelo yes. for the first day of the season. What is the, the mood, the level of excitement like around your team right now? Yeah, it's very exciting. I think they are ready to play. They're ready to see some different faces on the other side of the net there I think it gets kind of exhausting when you have to see the same people over and over in your gym and you just get comfortable you get comfortable playing against your teammates so a little outside competition is going to be good I'm excited to see how they do um, it's obviously a little bit nerve-wracking I mean then it's this is now it counts it matters uh, but I am really excited to see how they do and I think they're really excited to get out there how do you try and when you have that uh, so many coaches talk about in, when you have fall camp, yeah, it gets monotonous. You're playing against the same players. You can only practice so, the same yeah. thing so many times. How do you try and break up that monotony so it's not 
as dull as it might be otherwise? Um, I think that's part of coaching. You have to figure out how to make it fun. You have to figure out how to be a little bit creative. Um, we add in a little bit more mental training. That way it's not just physical. And obviously we're dealing with injuries, so we have to try to protect their bodies as much as possible. But just not having outside competition, you're not being able to react to a performance. So if we're lacking in certain areas after a game, it's easy to see. It's easy to know where we have to go get better. And when it's just practice after practice without any games, it's just a matter of you, know, you can't gauge how well we're improving. I think we're doing really well. I just don't know if it's um, enough yet. And so having that competition will really tell us are we where we want to be or not yet. Are you happy with the, the level of improvement you've seen from your team over the course of the last few weeks? Absolutely. I think there are certain areas where I think we're taking strides. We're really improving. There are still areas where I think we need to work harder. I think we need to get better. I think while I'm a perfectionist and obviously I want that ultimate end goal, which would be an NCAA regional appearance and you know a conference title, and that's not going to be easy. So I have really high expectations of the team and I'm super critical of them on all the little stuff and I think that's what's going to make us you know the best we could possibly be is by being good at the little things. And one of the biggest differences between this and the spring is you didn't have an NCAA regional title. There were so many things you didn't have you didn't right. the ability to strive for in the spring. Now all of a sudden all the possibilities are open to this team this year. Do you have to approach this season any differently than you did in the spring knowing that the there's more of an opportunity for you guys to accomplish goals like that? A little bit. I think you have to make them aware of the possibilities. Obviously, we have a lot of new kids. The freshmen from last year and the incoming freshmen, they may not even know about the NCAAs. They don't know about regionals. They didn't even know that was a, a possibility last year. So we had to kind of inform them of what, what is required and how we get there and how big of an accomplishment that would be and you know make them aware of that, which creates a little bit of pressure. I think a little bit of pressure on the team knowing that that's an option now and it's a difficult goal and, and things we have to work for, but a little bit of pressure pushes them and a little bit of pressure, I think, um, makes them strive for more. So we kind of have to find that balance between push them to work hard, but also make sure they enjoy it, make sure they enjoy what they're doing. And when you look at last season, obviously this team came, came so close to accomplishing the goal of winning an LSC, the LSC tournament championship. And you would, they, they come back to this season you would think knowing what it's going to take for them to get back to that spot and trying to accomplish that goal. Obviously not just that goal, but the ones that, uh, like a regional championship, that would also be a possibility. When, when you have a team that knows what, it's take, knows what it takes to get there, sort of knows how good they can be, do you have to coach the team a little differently? Oh, that's difficult. I think knowing what is required doesn't mean that they're able to do that. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of teams know what is necessary to win the Lone Star Conference, but not all of them can do it. And so I think what it boils down to is knowing on paper what is required to win doesn't mean that they can execute, which means that's what, where we come in. We have to make sure that they're capable of executing those things and they have the skill sets necessary to, to really um, achieve the stats they need and be able to outmaneuver other teams and outplay them. So I think on paper, if you ask the girls, they all know exactly what is required. But being able to accomplish that, we're going to have to get better in some areas. First weekend starts for you guys in San Angelo. What are the things you really want to see from your team? What are the areas you really want to see them execute in in these, in these first four matches in the on opening weekend? I tend to be pretty confident in our defense. I think um, we practice that a lot. I'm passionate about it. So I, I think we I expect us to be very good defensively, so I think I'm going to be looking more towards the side out. I think if we can have a good side out percentage and, and good kill percentage on that first ball pass that swing scenarios, I think we're going to be pretty good. So I, I think I'll be looking more towards our, our kill percentage, our hitting percentage, and our side out percentage. All right, well, Coach, best of luck opening weekend. We can't wait to see you and your team back at the Specs. September 17th yes. is the home opener. Havelinas will be facing Cameron on the night of September 17th. We hope to see all of you there. But, Coach, thanks for the time. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much. We'll take our second break here on the Coach's Show. When we return, we'll have our head to Havelina football coach, Michael Salinas. So don't go away.
Welcome back to episode one of the Havlina Coaches Show for the 2021-22 season. And our final guest is our head Havlina football coach, Michael Salinas. Coach, good to see you again. Good to see you, Mark. How's it going? It's going great. Just a few days away from the start of football and volleyball season. So it's, it's a great time of year. I know you guys have been practicing over the course of the last few weeks and with one more week to go. How happy are you with what you've been able to accomplish in practice over the last several weeks? I think our players have worked hard. Um, we're sort of not where we need to be yet, but I think I'm happy with the progress that we've made to this point and just excited to, to be able to look forward to game week this week and, and getting on a plane Friday and going to play a good Saginaw. Uh, Valley State team. Can you feel a, a level of excitement in your, around your team now as we get as we're finally arriving at game week? Yeah, I think they they're ready for a game week. Uh, they've been through fall camp and we've been through our practices and have banged on each other uh, enough for the last couple weeks that they are uh, anticipating a ball game. So hopefully our focus level is where it needs to be. We have a great week of preparation and uh, uh, eliminate all distractions headed towards uh, uh, Saturday. Where does that preparation start once you get into a game week like this one? Right now it starts with every facet of it from offense, defense, and special teams as it relates to meetings and practice and then making great choices uh, outside of here to mitigate our risk as we continue to navigate our way through through COVID-19. How happy are you with the depth that you have on this team right now in all in all areas? I think we're okay. I, I think there's never a coach always wants a little bit more selfishly uh, in some areas but uh, we're going to have to stay healthy. We're going to have to make great choices uh, outside of the football field to make sure that uh, our football team stays intact. How happy are you? Have you been with the level of play you've seen from your quarterbacks to this point? I think we've improved. I think Coach LaHue has done a great job uh, with our quarterbacks, and uh, they're progressing and uh, uh, have taken us the next step in the offense and in the scheme. So they've made some better decisions in fall camp. Uh, we still have a quarterback battle uh, going on right now. But I don't think, again, in this day and age, I think you pick a starter. And I don't know um, that uh, that same guy is able to play all, all 10 or 11 games. It is a physical league. Uh, we do run our quarterbacks a little bit. So uh, if there's not, a, the number two guy better be ready and prepared to play as well. How much of a of an emphasis do you guys how, how much how much do you guys emphasize that in your team which is not just with the quarterback position but with all positions that it doesn't matter where you're on the depth chart you have to be ready yeah we have a next man up mentality and i think our guys understand that uh, normally it just relates to injuries uh, currently it's it's related to injuries and and COVID 19. so um, if you're a two or a three you're you're basically one play away uh, on the depth chart and i think our guys understand that so we're trying to Again, to continue to stress that message, but uh, the philosophy around here is going to be next man up. So um, anytime somebody goes down or we lose a guy, uh, the next guy better be ready to step in and, and uh, take advantage of an opportunity. I know this coaching staff has changed a little bit. Even since we last saw you guys in the spring, you have a couple guys in some new roles. You have one or two new faces. How happy are you? How confident are you that you have the right group of coaches to, to lead this team to where you want them to go? I'm confident in our staff we've, we've assembled and put together. They've, they've worked really hard. Uh, Coach Petty has taken over as a defensive coordinator. Uh, Coach Cotton is stepping in and, and coaching our linebackers and, and uh, uh, running our special teams on the defensive side. And then we hired uh, Alex Wierzbicki. Uh, who came to us from Tyler Junior College to take over our defensive line. So those guys have done a good job in fall camp, coming together as a staff, uh, understanding what we want to do and how we want to do it. And then offensively, we juggled some guys around. Coach Cundiff is now uh, coaching running backs, uh, and Coach Detmer is now transitioned to coach wide receivers, along with transitioning Coach LaHue uh, uh, to coach the quarterbacks and continue to be our offensive coordinator. You mentioned Coach Cotton coaching the special teams. There's an old football coach who once said the best way to improve a team quickly is through special teams. How happy you've been with what you've seen from your special teams in practice? They've done a good job. I mean, coach has done a good job preparing these guys and getting them ready. I think we have a solid plan in place. Now it's just uh, getting the right pieces to the puzzle on specials. We've got to get the right guys in the right positions as fast as possible because early in the season, uh, special teams are going to impact the ball game. And for us, we want it to be in a good way. You have you mentioned Saginaw Valley State's the first game on September 4th. What are the um, 
What are the things that you need, guys need to make sure you're prepared for when uh, prepare for against Saginaw this week? Anytime you open up week one uh, with a team that played one game in the spring, uh, we played two, so we have one game to go off. Uh, you're going to have to be prepared for some unknowns and how we react to those situations. But we got to be prepared to play extremely hard. We got to play clean in all three phases. We got to eliminate penalties, and then we have to win the kicking game. Um, most of uh, big plays early in the season, a lot of them will happen in the kicking game. So we need to ensure that we're we're prepared in all three phases. But again, uh, we got to play extremely hard. We got to play disciplined football, and um, we got to eliminate uh, big plays uh, early in the season. How confident are you that this team will be ready when the ball kicks off on September fourth? It's Monday, so we got a couple days in front of us. But uh, uh, we're going to have them ready on on Saturday. And again, I think our guys are going to. Uh, be excited to play, so we're going to go out and fire our best shot on Saturday. Well, Coach, we can't wait to see it, and we're also excited to finally have you guys back at Havelina Stadium on September 11th. We'll see you then as well. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having us. And we appreciate everyone who took the time. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of the year on the Havelina Coaches Show, and we'll be back next week with a few more guests for episode number two. But in the meantime, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Mendoza's Pharmacy Havelina Sports Network.